Um, so I suppose I, I, this is for, for Mark again, I guess. Um, publishing, we, we've seen, has, has gone very global, um, mm. even within uh, an individual society. And our societies, of course, have, have, have global reach as far as their authors and, and researchers are, are concerned. Um, but uh, I generally see societies as being much more regional and not global. Um, so should we even be looking at uh, wider mergers or, or collaborations ac across the whole, the whole globe? Um, I, I think in our sector, um, the uh, vast majority, surprisingly perhaps, of, of member organisations of learning, of learning societies are pretty global in their publishing. Um, I mean, they, you know, they, they will have perhaps 90% of the authors they're publishing from outside the UK. Um, they will promote their their products at international venues. Um, so I think they have an international view. Of course, um, a lot of them are not self-publishing. They're publishing with major international uh, publishers, some of them I noticed here today, um, uh, who will you know, be promoting their, their products globally. So I think there is a sort of global ele element to it. In terms of collaboration across, um, you know, outside in Europe and beyond, uh, the UK is quite unique. I mean, the, the US has some very big single subject societies like physiology and biochemistry and so on. But there are not that many in other parts of the world. And in Europe, uh, the number of subject specific um, uh, societies is quite small. And they are generally very small in number. I mean, the R equivalent in Germany has two members of staff. Um, a lot of them don't have members of staff. They're very small. So I think it's a very different ball game, actually. Mm. Uh, good, got a question. Uh, Bernie Rickinson, IOM3. Uh, uh, to follow up that point, um, uh, we've been successful actually in doing seven mergers in the last sort of 12 years within the sort of engineering technology community. But raising the point of that global merger, um, that's one that's escaped us so far. I, I think if professional societies really have a window of opportunity to develop a real global membership, it's now. I think there's an awful lot of user benefit, membership benefit that we can provide that young people across the globe see as advantageous. Um, I, I point to Mark then, what's holding us back in terms of getting perhaps the trust to do a really first one-off of a global merger? Um, I suppose it depends on what, you know, it will vary across sectors, but it, I think it depends on what the benefits that are delivered, delivered locally are. So we have a, an Australia and New Zealand, a sort of Oceania type branch, um, where we have members in that region of the world. Uh, they're not huge in numbers. We have a Hong Kong branch, we have some in the US. Um, and other organisations have more members than we do. On the, on the, I'm just talking about the biosciences now um, uh, around the world. Um, but I think unless you have a package of benefits which are focused locally, it's quite difficult to see that working. Now, if you have the strength of a large organisation to do that, like the Royal Society of Chemistry, the Institute of Physics, you, know, you, 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 can, you can perhaps invest the, the required sums to develop those benefits and deliver them locally and build capacity. But I think if you don't have those resources, building the capacity is quite tricky. And I don't even ask Helena what the tax implications of doing such a move would be. But uh, I don't know if there's any comment at all on... Uh, just perhaps. Just VAT becomes an even bigger nightmare. <laughs> structures. Structures are, structures are always important, understanding that the, the, where we've seen organisations go wrong internationally is where they, they didn't understand the local laws of what they can yeah. do as a branch, what they have to have a, a company done, uh, set up. Um, so that's the only caveat there is know the structures. Okay, good question. Have you got the microphone? Yeah, probably. I've got the microphone. Um, I'm Sally Hardy. I'm Chief Exec of the Regional Studies Association. Um, I wanted to make a more general point. Is now a good time for me to make it? Please do. Yes. Fine. Can I, um, I'd like to thank um, the organisers for this conference. 
Um, I've, I've enjoyed it. I think whoever came up with the title for it was a genius. Um, I really love Society Street. <laughs> I blush easy. Uh, I think, it, I think it, um, it brings to the mind this whole notion of neighbourhoods, um, meeting your neighbours, chance encounters on the street, um, and a sense of community. And for me, that's been one of the major benefits of today, is the people that I've spoken to during the breaks and um, after the sessions, I've really enjoyed that. Um, I would like to um, thank, thank you for organising it and make a suggestion that you have this wonderful app. Why don't you, when you ask for our, our feedback, ask about the kinds of topics that... Um, as participants this year, we would like to talk about next year because I think there are a range of um, ways of approaching this that we haven't that we haven't addressed today. There's a limit to what you can do in a day, um, but I think uh, there's a number of us would love you to tackle some of the big, challenging issues that the chief execs of the societies are facing at the moment. And I would certainly welcome the opportunity to come back next year and hear those presentations. Thank you. Yeah, by all means, please do. I think I said right at the start, I'm not sure you're here right at the start. Any suggestions, any feedback, email me, email the organisers. We'll pick up. We absolutely know we want to make this a better conference, uh, improve this conference for next year. There will be a next year. <laughs> um, and absolutely, it's got to be shaped by you. But uh, do, you, do you want to comment as well, Lisa? Oh, is your mic on? Um, so via the app, there will be a pop-up at the end of the day where you will be able to answer more general questions about the conference, um, including giving us suggestions of topics that you would feel would be important for next time, because that's really s so important to us. And I promise you, we, we look at all of those and we will make sure that we try to accommodate as much of that as we possibly can for next time. Okay, well, thank you very much. I'm just going to say thank you to the panel uh, once again um, for now. Thank you very much.